out there listening to the podcast. This is Travis with the Broken Battery Pop Culture Podcast, brought to you as always by Broken Battery Entertainment. Today is a great episode, folks. I feel good about this episode today because I am with one of the utmost experts in the field when it comes to this stuff. The one, the only, Joseph. Good evening. <laughs> aka the angry star wars fan which i think that title can go out to a lot of people right now and joe would not even argue with me on this there's, there's a few bright spots because i just gave away what we're talking about we're starting off the first uh of a multi-part uh show dialogue that we're going to be doing about shared universes and franchises what was good what's good about them what's bad about them now we're going to be tackling Star Wars first because it's such a hot button right now because, let's face it, it's, they're, they're shitting all over it. <laughs> well, I mean, there's so much good with it, but there's also so much bad with it. But do you remember, like, when it was all good? Well, yeah. Yes, it was the original three movies. Well, I mean, you know, aside from, like, the holiday special. <laughs> the old Ewok adventure. <laughs> And droids. Droids was all right. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, but we're you know, we're not gonna we're, we're gonna handle we're gonna handle the original three. It's considered legends, no. Oh, it is yeah, considered it's legend. Not well, canon, so. yes. Well, thank you. It's because some chick that didn't understand it decided to be given the keys to the kingdom, and uh, she decided to shit all over it and go against her fan base for some reason. Um, we're not going to be phase. We're not going to be uh, examining four, five, and six, which are the original ones, which are the best ones. Uh, we're going to be starting actually chronic out along the time of chronology, <laughs> chronically, chronologically. chronologically. Thank you. And I, I always have a hard time with that word. It's all right. Words are hard. <laughs> Words are hard. This is hard. Um, we're going to be talking about episodes one, two, and three. Of uh, the the movies, yes, Joe is not the biggest fan of these, nor am I. But I can at least say they're better than the sequel trilogy. They were as good as they could have been. Yes, exactly. And you know, George, we know you tried, man. We we get you. All right, dude. We, everybody gets a mulligan. <laughs> but um, but you at least there were some bright spots in all three movies. Um, but let's get to, let's get the ball rolling. I'm going to roll it down the, uh, down the hill and see, I mean, and we're going to be looking at all these multiple different types of franchises. So it's just going to be a pretty much, uh, how it's going to go probably throughout the month, maybe a little bit longer. It's something we've been wanting to be talking about for a while. So anyway, Joe, we're going to start off with the one that was the most divisive out of the original trilogy, because, uh, I think it was the worst out of the original trilogy was the Phantom Menace. I think I was in eighth grade when I went and seen it, or ninth grade. No, no I was eighth. Okay. Right around there. And I was excited, because I grew up watching Star Wars, because my brother was a big fan, and, you know, we, we had, the, we had uh, the special edition box. That, like, I remember the special editions came out, and I went there when I was, you know, I was a little kid, and um, they're like, oh, yeah, they're going to add all this amazing stuff to it. I'm like, yeah. uh, it's the same movie. <laughs> it's the same movie. There's a do-back. Sorry about that, folks. We had to take a quick break because... Uh, yeah, the cat well, got into the sushi. Yeah, cat's jo Joe's cat's a dick. <laughs> he sure is. And we did a little uh, changes on the uh, on the sound, and we're kind of thankful of the cat at the same time. Yeah, thanks a lot, Travis. No, yeah. It just you know, it doesn't sound like I'm just whispering in the background. You said you loved Careless Whisper. Uh, I didn't know what you meant by that. Oh, no, that was the song. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but... Um, Getting back to what we were saying, uh, this is going to be a multiple franchise checkout of everything. It's going to take the better part of the month, maybe a little bit longer, but we're going to look at the good and the bad and give you the facts about our opinions on these. You mean what we liked and what we disliked? Yes, yeah, so I know you got quite the list for sort this. Of, sort of a, sort of a multi-movie multi, multi -movie review. Yeah, weird. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you make all these movies that, you know, go with each other, I mean, at some point, somebody's going to have to address this shit. Yes, this is canonically and how they connect and stuff like that. And, you know, and we think we're, we're a little bit better than most people when we go to this because uh, 
we're anal attentive when it comes to this stuff. I like the stuff that makes sense, but I also like um I don't know. I think if you if you're setting yourself up to do a franchise or do something along those lines is you got to be on board with everybody and get the same kind of what you want out of it. You know the same I, this is the same kind of narrative. Uh we want we want this this and this. This guy's a badass. He's got to continue to be a badass. Yeah, you got to you got to show him improving. Proving. You know, it, it, proving, improving, you know, that yeah. he's badass. And then he keeps it going, and it's it's all pretty good. And, you know, and you know, like you said, we're going to start off with the Phantas... Uh, the Phantom. The Phantas. The Phantas Menace. The, the Fantana Menace? <laughs> yes. They keep handing out Fantana. That's how the trade, uh, the, the trade Federation got all their money. That's right. Carbonated beverages. <laughs> That's actually Fanta. Fanta. I don't know. I, would be, I was born in the... They US. were actually... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now that you mention it, I believe that Fanta, they were uh, Nazi sympathizers. Were they? <laughs> yeah. We learn something new every day. Yeah, I just I just saw that the other day. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you are they still around? I don't know if that Fanta oh, is. Oh, yeah, though. they have that hor- those horrible commercials with the girls on jet skis. It's like, don't, <laughs> don't you want them, Fanta? It's weird. All their, all their freaking factories moved to Argentina. That's so weird being Nazi sympathizers. Yeah. So anyway, Joe, Phantom Menace. Yep. I'm not even. Uh, I, I'm. I'm not even impressed with it. barely any part of this movie. No. I. I think that. I. I think that from the. The very beginning of it. Well, let, let's not not say the very beginning of it. Where this movie takes the uh, turn for the worst. <laughs> I know where. I know where you're gonna say. Is it. right after. Right after these Jedi who actually had a really pretty badass opening scene. It did, because, you know, something before that, we never saw, like, Jedi Knights together on the screen. I mean... Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you saw like Yoda and Luke, but Luke wasn't fully trained all the time. Well, I mean... Well, I mean, you did... In Jedi, he was trained and stuff like that, but, like, the... The laser bolt deflection. Yeah, they, they're you know, taking the, on the force, droids. Yeah, the droids, the force push. Yeah, you know everything. Everything to that was just cutting the, through a door with a lightsaber. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, dude. And Liam Neeson had that whole samurai thing about him. Yes. You know, he's like, and it was cool. Yeah. They like, we're gonna send these two guys. that are gonna defuse this. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, you know, they sent the coolers in. You know. Yeah, they sent the coolers. <laughs> so they do this. And, and so they go there, and you know the um, you know the Trade Federation, which is an analogy for Asian. The people. Viceroy Newt Gunray. Newt Gunray, aka I'm an Asian guy in Star Wars. <laughs> I mean, let's yeah, face it, it was yeah. it was uh, very very obvious. <laughs> it was very obvious, but we digress. Anyway, so awesome stuff. They get off the ship. Yep. They get down to the planet. Yeah, they escape in a droid, uh, you know, landing ship and. <laughs> And then who do they run into? The movie killer himself. Oh, yeah. A one, oh, a one Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> the most hated character before Rose Tico showed up. Anyway. I actually, you know what? I, I, I When everybody said that they hated her, I, I was like, she's no Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Close second, though, I didn't, right? Yeah. I mean, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't like her, but... I, she wasn't even as close to Jar Jar Binks, but I mean, I guess it's just really bad because Jar Jar Binks wasn't actually real, so he didn't have all the Twitter backlash or well, all the, the st- actor for Jar Jar Binks got death threats and he got all kind. He says he he stopped acting because of that. He got such he got shit on so much, and I'm like, he yeah. stopped acting. When did he start? I, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm like, I didn't know what he looked like until I read this article, and he's like, yeah, it pretty much ruined my life, and I'm like. Yeah, man. I mean, but you know, I, I can't blame you. You he just did it did, voluntarily. You did it voluntarily. I was only following orders. That's right. That that doesn't work for me. Yeah, well, because <laughs> he did cash the checks. He did cash the checks. Well, and he's probably still collecting the royalties as well. Yep. I just remember that anytime. I, I mean, who honestly bought the Jar Jar Binks action figure? <laughs> um, I did. <laughs> Only because I had all the rest of them. I was like, all right, shit, I got to get this one too. Exactly. Exactly. He, it, It's always that one piece you need to finish the collection that really pisses you off. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, when those movies came out, I was a, you know, young adult. So I actually had, you know, 
self control not to actually open right. the yep. uh, toys. Oh yeah. So, but you know, he was always in the back row. Nobody, nobody looked at him. Nobody could see it in my display case. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, what's this? Stuff? Oh, don't don't worry about that. Yeah. It's okay. We're not. We we don't talk about that. It's, it's like buying like the RoboCop action figures, and you buy the girl that helped make RoboCop. I remember I got that for. For my birthday one time when I was like five or six. You mean you got the doctor? The doctor, and I'm like, she's like, that's the girl that helps RoboCop. I'm like, it's awful. <laughs> I felt like such. I was such a spoiled brat. I felt like at the time, my dad was very disappointed with myself. And looking back well, at myself, I mean, I was. maybe they, maybe maybe they shouldn't have bought you such a shitty toy. <laughs> she meant well because they gave the doctor all these like guns and like weapons and shit. And I'm like, I don't remember that happening in RoboCop. But then again. I was really little, and I shouldn't have probably even been watching fucking RoboCop. No. But this was based on the cartoon. Probably not. This was based on the cartoon, which was out, and it was geared towards kids. It's kind of like that night that we told Kim that it was okay for the kids to watch Ghostbusters. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, she wanted wanted to watch Thumbelina with them, and we're like, no, Ghostbusters, and we got them chanting. (laughs) Now you can't, well, how old were they? They were like six? (laughs) Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, Ghostbusters. (laughs) She's like, there's literally a scene of a ghost blowing a guy. And I was like, okay. Oops. <laughs> kind of slipped my mind. Yeah. Okay. Oops. <laughs> but um, anyway, back to the Phantom Menace. Jar Jar Binks shows up and everything goes downhill. Because not only did I not like Jar Jar Binks, I didn't like any of the fucking Gungans. Yeah. And I am so glad, like, in a later... Only, epi- the only Gungan I liked was the one that kept poking Jar Jar with the stick. And zapping and, him. Yeah, and, like, he was General something. He had, oh, yeah, Jar Jar. Yeah, that, that guy. Yeah, yeah. And he... He actually he, looked like a warrior. Yes, but he kept, like, shocking Jar Jar. Yeah. Which, you know, like, was great. Yes, because you, you, yeah. he was inflicting damage. I, in fact, even liked it so much in the Mandalorian TV show, which is the brightest spot in Star Wars right now, um, Bill Burr actually made a joke about the Gungans. Maybe he's a Gungan. And I'm like, oh my God, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bill Burr. <laughs> that was actually a really, really good episode. Oh, all of them were. Yeah. And then another interesting thing, too, about the horrible, horrible Gungans is that uh, them, along with the uh, Wookiees, are the uh, one of the only species in uh, Star Wars that uh, carry life debts. Really? Oh yeah, they yeah. did say life death. Yeah, because after they after they uh, saved him, then they were gonna have to be, and he's like, "Now I gotta have another life death with you." Oh uh, no, no, no! You see, I th- you want to do something yeah, good for like, me? Oh, Get away from me! Shit! You know that life that costs the galaxy dearly, right? And- <laughs> So I mean we can we can come back to Jar Jar Binks on this. I mean throughout the this entire episode because uh, I mean just from this part of the Phantom Menace. But uh, part of the other thing, uh, one of the other issues I have with this is the uh, the massive amount of CGI in it. Absolutely. The great thing about Star Wars, the original Star Wars, was the practical effects. Yes. I remember reading this, doc- doc- uh, reading this documentary. Um, no, it's not a documentary. Well, this book about it. And uh, Lucas, when he was doing the attack on the Death Star in the original Star Wars movie, he cannibalized all these like battleship models and stuff, and he and he put them all on the uh, on this big board and like would do drive bys with cars and making explosions to do the practical effects, mm. and it still looks cool now. Right. I mean, you did, movies require little disbelief. Okay. I sure. mean. I don't need to see every fucking uh, grain of hair on Chewbacca's mane. All right, we. I understand. I mean, you do now. Oh yeah, you do now because right. there's a standard that's been set. But I mean, like if it's good storytelling, telling you can go past it. But you can't say the same with CGI and having bad storytelling. Like, oh yeah, Jar Jar looks lifelike, but I can't fucking stand him. Right. I mean, I mean, let's be honest. He didn't really look that lifelike. No, he didn't. I mean, it was obvious that there was a cartoon character in there with him. And, <laughs> I expected and, an anvil to land on him. <laughs> and, and and at some points when he had to interact with them like really, really closely, it seemed like it was hard for, you know, uh Owen McGregor and, you know, Liam, Liam Neeson. Neeson and anybody, Natalie Portman. Um Well, you know, because she's got the range of a fucking cactus. Well, okay. I like other things she does. I absolutely despise her in this. I don't like her in this or in the Thor movies. Uh, well, eh, I, I I don't. 
I don't have that big of a. I liked her in V for Vendetta. She she like she owned in that movie. Sure. But, but like those five movies, uh, no, yeah. I, I think not. Yeah, not I mean, even even watching the Clone Wars cartoon, every time that like Padme was like a, a Padme episode, it always included <laughs> Jar Jar Binks too. Yeah, I'm like why? Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> You know, and it was just like, man, can we get more screen time from her? <laughs> yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> so but anyway, yeah. so so they go down to the planet, and you find out it, it's illegal what the Trade Federation is doing. Yeah, yeah, okay, we cool. Well, you know, you know, to take this from How I Met Your Mother, you know, like the original trilogies barely even you know touched on the uh, galactic trade law. No, exactly. So, I don't know about you, but when I love my fiction, I want to learn all about <laughs> economic resources and shit like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they barely touched on it. <laughs> they barely touched. On it. <laughs> I mean, there was like there was even there was like. I, I think in the cantina they maybe exchanged some type of no Han, some, Han threw money down because he blew Greedo away. Yeah, some, like, sorry about the mess. Yeah, and he threw it those. was like some here's some credits, you know, to, you're clean this shit up. Yeah, like I didn't know what spice was. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's a credit? He's like, you know, I owed you Java a lot of money. I'm like, oh, yeah, but what do you owe him? <laughs> a lot, a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's a whole truckload of a lot. Or no, I'm sorry, speeder of a lot. Uh, they don't have trucks. Speeder load. So anyway, they go. The Jedi's get to the capital area. Oh no, I'm sorry. They had to go through the core. <laughs> well, they had to first go to Gungan City, which they haven't had breathers. <laughs> we had these like things they put in their mouths, like, yeah, we just we we know we're gonna be swimming underwater. Well, I mean, you know, they're kind of like Boy Scouts of space. I give you. I'll give you that. They one. are always prepared. Yes, and I mean, if I had something where I could breathe underwater and stuff, I probably would have kept kept it with me the entire time. I, I would have it with me at all times. Shit, if I had a grappling gun, I would carry it with me at all times, also. Which I think they did. Yeah. Didn't they have a grappling gun? They did have a grappling gun. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. So yeah, they are Boy Scouts. So all right. Well, no, I mean, they didn't have the grappling guns. The the soldiers when they tried to take over the castle at the or no, not the castle but the palace at the end of the episode those that makes more sense though because they got they had a game plan they they, they went in there they're gonna go here through here we'll probably grapple up to there so right. that's smart yeah but even in the original one like luke didn't carry around a grappling hook that was a stormtrooper utility belt. yeah yeah so stormtroopers carry around grappling hooks and i'm like you motherfuckers can't even hit this broad side of a barn how you gonna throw a grappling hook but around they're place? prepared mm-hmm yep so yeah, so so <laughs> so then they they go to the the you know ever so welcoming uh, you know Gungan City, Gungan City, the and, sunken and, and, Gungan City, and obviously they're with the dipshit of the, of their culture. Yep. So that that's gonna make the Jedi look all right, yeah. right? Oh yeah, for sure. And then and then they escape that, and then well they didn't I escape. Mean, they said get, get get him the fuck out of here. That's what they said. <laughs> they like, yeah, they, you can leave. Well, no, they were going to kill him. Yes. <laughs> He's got a which life could have made, <laughs> Which could have made this entire movie much, much better. It would have made the entire trilogy a different story because, as we're going to see later on in a, in a later movie, we're going to come back to Jar Jar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, now, off to Tantooine. Or not. Well, they weren't off to Tantooine. They yeah, were, this is where they, they go through the core. <laughs> yeah. Well, they were going through the core so that they could get to. Show the, a bunch of giant fish. Right. <laughs> Right, and once again, something I had the uh, you know that had the had the uh, inclination to uh, to uh, take Jar Jar down, but then happened. They saved him again. Are you sure that Jar Jar wasn't a Sith in disguise? I know yeah, I've heard that theory. Yeah, I've seen it, but no, I don't. I, yeah, I think it's interesting, but it's not that good. Well, anyway, <laughs> so they get they get to the capital, um, and they uh, they get the queen out the fuck out of there. Well. Well, first of all, they the queen insists that they take her handmaiden, which ends up being oh shocker, the queen, the queen. Yes, if you haven't seen it already, well, you know I'm not even going to say spoiler alert. You're stupid. Yeah, uh, so- <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't say people are stupid. They're not Travis. stupid. They're just not watching it. I mean, that they- or they're smarter than us because they actually saw it being a train wreck and they avoided it. Maybe. Yeah. So Maybe. I take that back. I take that back. Well, and then you know. Uh, travel. They're uh, where? They, no, they're going to Coruscant. Of course, and this yeah. is where they got to work in R two D two. Yes, and this is the basically like this is where R two comes from. 
Right. Yeah. They so, didn't. They never explained where he was before this. No. He. I'm, well, he was on that ship on Naboo. On Naboo. Yeah. So, yeah. So he, apparently he was built on Naboo. He was Nubian. Nubian. He, does, he doesn't look Nubian. Yeah. It's really strange. <laughs> <laughs> so they go and they happen to they. The reasoning was smart, okay? The reasoning was smart where they had to go. They went to Tatooine because they had to get damages to their ship. Right. They go, Tatooine's out of the way. It's controlled by a bunch of fucking gangsters. Right. The Trade Federation won't go there. Yeah, exactly. So that makes a lot of sense. It's some place to hide out. Um, So they go there, and hijinks ensue. Well, well, first of all, they, in between this part of it, when they escaped a Coruscant, then they introduced Darth Maul. So that oh. was a bright point. Yeah, because he was the selling point for like the promotion of this movie. Because they showed images of him, I'm like, oh man, he looks fucking badass. Right. Because we saw like Vader, and like yeah, Vader was always cool looking and stuff. But you know, Vader was kind of blocky when he moved, right? And before these movies, we didn't really see what the Emperor could do. He could no, he shot hand, lightning out of his hands. Right. But Darth Maul. We saw his lightsaber, and they even did a promo where it showed there was a second blade that popped out. I thought that that was awesome. Oh, yeah. It was it was the best part of the whole movie. Right. But anyway, we'll get back to that part. So anyway, so you you know, they're on there. They need to get the parts. They're dealing with some junk some junk dealer. What was his name? Warto. Warto or Watto Warto. or something oh, like no, that. Oh, uh, no. Watto. Watto. Yeah, yeah, flying around. And he does exactly. He's a Tiderian. He's a Tiderian. You have mind tricks you yeah, have to he, work he, on. He can't me. be. Yeah. I know you know, and he's like waving your hand like you're some kind of Jedi. <laughs> and I'm like, I think the laser sword on his hip would have gave that away. Sure. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, okay. So his his Jedi mind trick doesn't work on him because he's not stupid. Um, or weak willed. Anyway, and they come across a slave boy, and surprise, surprise, this guy's gonna go. Home. He's gonna be a big deal throughout the entire thing of Star Wars. It's. Uh, Vader himself, Anakin Skywalker. Uh, played by Jake Lloyd. Jake, Jake Lloyd. Jake, I haven't worked since Lloyd. Yes. And you ever seen stuff about him? He had a drug problem. Oh, well. Yeah. You know, again, another person that said, this movie ruined my life. Yeah. Well. Uh, so, anyway, somehow reasons happen. And reasons happen? Reasons happen. That's, and and he's, got a pod, he's got a pod race to get the parts for them. Yeah. I, I'm not going to go through the, the well, gist Well, I mean, he had his own pod. Yeah, you know? of I mean, course. He happened to be building... A, th- this eight-year-old <laughs> was building a dragster. From uh, spare parts. From spare parts. Okay. And also, he showed them him building C-3PO, too. Introduction uh, introduction to C-3PO, who I think is one of the most annoying, okay. essential characters of Star Wars. It is. And, you know, I would have just... It, my, my thing I hate the mo- second most about this movie is the fact that he built C-3PO. Why? Because he didn't even fucking acknowledge him in Empire Strikes Back. He what? didn't He didn't acknowledge him at all. Well, I mean, he can't. He can't. Ah. Uh, What's he going to be like? Oh, oh, 3PO. How are you? <laughs> I know what's, he wouldn't have. What's he going to do? I know he wouldn't have, but I mean, like, I just a little, just, it's a big fucking universe, and, okay? <laughs> and, 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 you know, and, and when you go back and, you know, all the times that C-3PO said, thank the maker. Yeah. You, know. you think Vader? Yeah. You think Vader for this? You just ran away from him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, he builds C-3PO, he builds a drag racer, all because... I got a lot of forced midichlorians in oh, me. Oh, God. Are, okay. Well, now that you said the word. <laughs> we don't like to mention the word. It, it, the force just seems so much cooler when it was like, it's a force. Like, yeah. No, I mean, they changed it into something like they were testing for antibodies. Like, exactly. Well, did you have the force already? Well, you got antibodies. You're, yeah. You're good. Yeah, so <laughs> once you got the force, you can't get the force. You don't again. need the vaccine. No. <laughs> You don't need the vaccine. You had the force. <laughs> you had the force. <laughs> so he uh, he bets. Um, they they put a wager in with Watto to back them in the pod race, and they you know, like. I I know why this got worked in there. George Lucas is a big fan of like nineteen fifties Ben Hur. 
Ben Hur. Yeah, it's Ben Hur, but he likes races and movies and stuff like that. You ever watch American Graffiti that yep. he also made? Yeah. He he likes that the you know muscle car shit like that. Right. Yeah. Right, yeah. You know, the Castle Run. The Castle Run. Not really a race, but not really a race for your life. Yes, and um, Solo. It's certain things you don't need to see. I, I like the Kessel Run because it was like that mythic thing that he did. But then when they show it, I'm like, eh, it wasn't what I imagined. Uh, I thought it was all right. Yeah, it's okay. I, I'm just saying. I, I, yeah, I can't really hate on Solo too much. No, no, not really. But they get the parts, and we get to see the first time we get to see Darth Maul in action. Oh, ready, yeah. Ready to leave. Yep. Oh, and it was awesome because he ran away. Yep. Qui-Gon Jinn ran away from Darth Maul. Right. Well, I mean, they had he had to get away to inform them that there's a the there, Sith are back. Absolutely, and if the, you know, what, even if that was the only part for Darth Maul in that movie, I would have been happy with that character how he did it. Um, there, there's there's like some that I theorized that they could have done like at the end of this movie different. That would have been great, but what they did wasn't bad. Um, so anyway, they get away. They go. They go to Coruscant. Yep. And we'd heard about this planet, this planet, and Star Wars Legends, and all stuff. I'm like, oh, it's the center of the of the Republic, which is gonna be cool, and it was cool. Yeah. Oh, the design was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, they get there, and well, it gets political. It gets political because the only other thing that I wanted to know in my Star Wars was besides economic disputes was political procedure. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Nixon in space. He's going to call for a vote of no confidence. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, and it's got that one. Uh, it's got it's got fucking General Zod as the guy that he deposes. Ah, uh, Chancellor Valorum. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I want I want him to say Neil before Valorum. <laughs> An intricate, an intricate part of it, yes. Yes, along with that one dude that has uh, the tentacles on his arm. It's like down his shoulders and shit. That he. Always... Oh, those were like, those are like tentacles and horns. Uh huh. So, apparently, Joe's pie is done. That was yes. the timer. Right? Yeah, the timer went off. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't silence my phone. <laughs> so anyway. No, but, um, surprise, surprise, the queen comes out as the handmaiden. Yeah. Oh, no, she did that on, she did that on, back on Naboo. She was actually quiet about the whole thing when they were there in Coruscant because she went and bowed before the Gungans because they weren't getting any fucking help. They weren't getting any from fucking help because you meet the emperor for the first time when they're on Coruscant. He... Well, no, the, no, that was after they went back. No, because you met the emperor the first time. Oh yeah, that was there. And he was like, Chancellor Palpatine. He's Chancellor Palpatine, and those people that knew a lot about Star Wars are like, "There's that motherfucker right That's there." That's the dude. That's the dude. A cool part of this movie. Yeah, it was cool because you. I mean, but we didn't need to see them going to the city council meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, they go there. And then they're not going to get any help. So they go aside to go back to Naboo and try and liberate it themselves. Yep. Yep. And they're like, hey, we'll get the Gungans. Right. Because, you know, they don't got guns. They get, they throw these little energy balls at people. And they got these little zapper sticks. Um, well, they got the, you know, they got the Grand Army. <laughs> grand Army. They appoint Jar Jar Binks as their fucking general. Um... Yeah, well, we understand he did something good and he brought them together, but he really didn't do anything. He was just there. No, uh, I mean, a series of mistakes and uh, F-ups. Right. And, you know, therefore, Jar Jar Binks. Right. And, you know, and we almost forgot, um, Qui-Gon won Anakin's freedom on Tatooine. So he's along with him the entire ride because he has the most of Ma this... Oh, force yeah. virus. Oh yeah, and he does. He does. He has the uh, <laughs> force virus. <laughs> yes, he has the dirtiest word in Star Wars history: metachlorians. Metachlorians. It's off the charts. It's off the charts. And he got to meet Obi Wan Kenobi. You know the guy he's going to murder later on. He get... Well, no. Also, he got to go between before the uh, Jedi Council. Oh, absolutely. Which featured Yoda and the once the long forgotten. Yaddle. Yaddle. Nobody talks about Yaddle. Not enough. They don't. They, Where they, the fuck did this baby come from? <laughs> it was a Yoda Yaddle sandwich. Sammy. You know, and you're like, yeah, 50 years have passed. Yeah, okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> so anyway, we get um they come back um with Anakin in tow and yeah. Well, he's the chosen one. He is the chosen oh, one. Oh, no, actually they said that he wasn't the chosen one. No. And that he was too old to, and there was uh, too much fear in him. That's right. But, you know, Yoda trained his son who was like twice his age. <laughs> Right. And plus well, two years. I mean, he did say that he was too old. He did? Yeah. That's his fact. Yeah. So they go back they go back there to help. And instead of getting more Jedi's to come with him, which would have made more sense. Uh, well, they didn't send more Jedi because they the it was not a war yet and they didn't have to get into it. Okay. That makes sense. But they weren't war they weren't warriors, they, they were, were peacekeepers. Well they were they were escorting Padme. Padme. So Padme Amidala. Yep. So anyway, and I, I actually liked the naming scheme from people from Naboo because it's like Shiv Palpatine, Padme El- Amidala. I'm like, it sounds really fucking exotic. Um, so they go back it's there. So- almost Nubian. Nubian. <laughs> so they go there and they figure out, yeah, you know, we're going to do what they do in every science fiction movie. We're gonna destroy one ship. It's gonna shut down the whole fucking army. That just seems like 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 just lazy writing on my and, and part of, of a lot of sci-fi stuff. Yeah, but I mean, they were droids. I get it. They're robots. They're, they're all centralized. But you, I mean, even now, I mean, I mean, the there's problem, no battery backup. There, there, there's no, there's no failure. I was, I was just gonna say that. I was <laughs> yeah. like, you didn't back up your server. I mean, there was more than one ship there. I mean, it wasn't just the one ship. No, there were a couple of those big like donut with the. It was a circle a, in the middle. Yeah. Donut with a circle. Oh, uh, yes. A donut with the hole. In donut it. with the hole. It was like a, it was like a uh, donut with a bite out of it and a Timbit in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> if you're hungry, you're welcome. Um, so anyway, they do that. Uh, and they don't do that. So they, 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 they decide to attack. And, and that's their game plan. They will get these pilots to their... No, no. They freed the pilots. That's right. They, yes. But guess who decided to get it in a fucking Starfighter too? No, 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 no. He hid in the Starfighter. Oh, that, that made sense. He hid in the Starfighter. Yeah, because he's like, sense. he's like, stay there. Right. Don't move. Right. <laughs> I'm like, that's and why I like Qui Gon. Because I honestly got, I love Qui Gon Jinn. I, I thought, thought he, he's like, I thought he was great. He great, and he actually was the only actor on set that knew how to like sword fight besides Ray Park, who did Darth Maul. Right. But so Ray, anyway. Ray Park. Parks was is it Parker Parks? Park, I don't know. Whatever uh, he played, he did Snake Eyes and GI Joe. And he was I, also a Toad in the X Men, and he was awesome in both of them. It was all right. So anyway, um, so they go there, and you know the Jedi's are badass, and then the best scene in the movie happens. Yes, the doors open, and badass Darth Maul. The beginning of the duel of fate. Yes, right there, he ignited the lightsaber, and I heard the entire theater. Scream, yeah, when he ignited his second lightsaber. I'm like, you just cheered on the bad guy yeah, swinging but... his dick around with his double-bladed double lightsaber. <laughs> it was pretty sweet. Though. Oh, it was. Yeah, that fight scene was awesome. Yep. Best part of the movie. So, anyway, the battle happens. Anakin somehow gets activates the fucking starfighter, and he takes part of the battle at eight years old. I kind of, I kind of think that... R2 had something to do with it. I think I okay, might have helped him, but I can you li- elaborate on just a little bit? They, they didn't really. I like reasons. I, I, I think that, you know, R2 being the undeveloped character at that moment, he took it upon himself to activate <laughs> the starship. And, yeah. and, you know, he was like, I don't have control over it. Guess who did? I do. Yeah. So anyway. R2 had faith in him. <laughs> I know. I just met this human, but I don't know why. Uh, I trust him, yeah. Kind of like him. <laughs> so. He, they 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 destroy the ship. They destroy that main ship right. with the only server. Um, no, no backup. No failover. No, no nothing. The the lightsaber fight, amazing. I didn't expect Qui Gon to die in the first movie. No, nope. really didn't. Nope. But that it set you know, the stage. That set the stage for the rest of the the rest of the actual good parts of the series. But it was also like the, I would say the best minute and a half, minute and a half to two minutes of lightsaber battle ever. Right. Obi-Wan meditates and then destroys him. 
Oh, he didn't even meditate. It was, I think it was quite kind of meditated. No. Oh, no, he did because he was holding for on for dear fucking life. That's right. In that fucking tube. They always have these tubes in Star Wars that go to nothing. There's, <laughs> there's always a tube. There's always a tube in Star Wars there's that goes right to the center of the planet. <laughs> center of the planet, or in Bestman's case, clouds. <laughs> just a bunch of clouds. Yep. I'm like, I hope that's not the shithole. They, they just... <laughs> They just kind of like leave these holes open in your sub- and there's no rails. There's no rails at any Never a rail. Never a rail. Never not, a rail. not even a hand. Yeah, a it's, handle. It's like OSHA watches that movie and they just go nuts. That would be the worst job to have in the Empire. <laughs> like you got to be the, the the safety manager. <laughs> so anyway, it's like, yeah, this is no good. You, know, you running? You want to go tell him? No, no, fuck no. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so. Qui-Gon dies, Obi-Wan Kenobi kills Darth Maul. Now, I honestly think in in the other movies and the prequel trilogy, they didn't need Dooku. They could have kept Maul. And he would have been that more effective. Like, I don't know, have him fall, but didn't you didn't need to get cut in half. Now, it's only because he was such a great character that other writers that doing this shit wrote him into stuff. Because he was just he's awesome. Like, watch Rebels, watch Clone Wars, he shows up and like they, like, hey, he survived. And I'm like, yeah, that makes him pretty badass. But I would have liked to see him on the screen in the movies a little bit more. But hey, whatever. I mean, that's my opinion. And it, the other stuff's good too. So, anyway. So, this is pretty much the end of this pile of shit movie. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. No, then he gets permission. They said, hey, you can't, you can't train him. But he died. So. We know you're just a brand new Jedi Knight. We weren't going to let your master, who had years and years of experience, train him. Well, you go ahead. Yeah, it's kind of a test for Obi Wan, right? And then, and also, uh, Qui Gon didn't like disappear like we saw all the other Jedi's did in the original trilogy. So it threw me for a loop. I'm like, why are they burning? How come he didn't turn into a bunch of clothes? Yeah. How come they didn't like little monsters? It. They they only did that for like Yoda, Ben, and Luke. Yeah, Ben. Which Ben? Huh? Which Ben? Oh, yeah, that Ben. Oh, and I say, I don't think of Kylo Ren. <laughs> As, I mean, I know he's Ben Solo, but... The the next movie... Whatever just happened to Jaina and Jason that they were going to bring out as the twin <sighs> as Luke and Leia's thing. That's Legends. Huh? That's Legends. It's Legends. It's Legends, and it's so good. I thought it was dumb. I'm going to say... Not Jaina and Jason, but... Okay. Let, let's let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay, so here's a quick spotlight, and it's kind of going along with everything. Um, I didn't say my spotlight at the beginning of the movie, uh, beginning of the podcast, but if you have not, if you're a Star Wars fan, read Heir to the Empire. Well, Heir to the Empire is good. That whole trilogy. The, Dark, the whole trilogy. Dark, Dark Force Rising. Yes. And then The Last Command. Yes, very, all those. Very good, very good uh you want to see something books. and There's... see and see what was taken from you by people doing stupid shit later on? You mean just throwing ideas against the wall? Yep. And then just being like, why don't we use them all? Yeah, or or JJ Abrams would be like, we really should have had an idea when we started this trilogy, and he didn't. Yeah. So anyway, um, and we also went... champions of the force. There's Cham- a champion of the force saga. Then other three books after the uh, after the. Uh... So just spotlight on Star yeah. Wars Legends because this is chock full of good shit. Very good stuff. So next in the tr- next in this in the prequel trilogy is Attack of the Clones. See, I know a lot of people give this movie shade. I didn't mind it. No, nope. no, it wasn't. It had one of the coolest scenes ever in the open warfare one. Well, I'm gonna just tell you this right now. This movie did something good to itself. By not featuring Jar Jar Binks exclusively throughout nope. the whole thing. He showed up for 30 seconds. He well, nodded. he was in it for a little bit longer than that. But he said hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to go through this one a little faster because I didn't mind this one as much as I disliked Phantom Menace. Um, I thought Boba Fett was annoying. Oh, yeah. No, they ruined Boba Fett. Yeah, As a kid. Yeah, okay, no, but I still, I mean, they ruined Boba Fett. Like, I didn't want to see Boba Fett's fucking face, okay? And then, guess what? I got to see Boba Fett's face through everything now because he's a fucking clone. And I'm like... I thought that that was pretty sweet. You thought that was sweet? No, I like the fact he was just a mysterious bounty hunter. No. Well, that wasn't Boba Fett's face. That was Django Fett's face. No, Django. Django? Django. Django? The game? Django? Oh, we got to totally make that Star Wars Jenga fet. 
<laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, it starts off. It, it, it jumps ahead in time, obviously. Uh, what ten years? Yes, it's ten years in between episode one and two, and it's another ten years between uh, two and three. No, it gets foggy three to six. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. anyway, yeah, I mean. Anywho, <laughs> so anyway, um, Anakin's a Padawan still, and which is understandable. And now he's played by Hayden Christensen. Hayden Christensen, and eh, what can I say about that acting performance that's not already been said about Baghdad? Mm. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so and Obi Wan is more of the Obi Wan we know. He's yes. got the beard. He's he's elegant. Yes. Yes, and we get to see hijinks in the city of Coruscant. Yeah. Coruscant capital yep. city. A chase through Coruscant because somebody's trying to take out Senator Amidala, who's now a senator. Apparently, you're 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 the fucking queen of a planet. Then you become a senator. <laughs> well, I mean, it had been ten years. Yes, I understand. And, that. You know, they did also get back to some politics. That you know, she was the youngest ever elected. senator. Well, no, the youngest ever elected queen oh yeah because uh, she was an elected queen so she got replaced true and anakin was the youngest ever person that blew up a fucking warship <laughs> that's true so anyway they um somebody's trying to kill her and they they they're assigned to guard her because they knew her really well and it's all manipulating by palpatine right yeah it's, he's behind the scenes in all these movies he's, and that's he's, like he's a puppet master of sorts and that's what i i did like about these movies because they showed how the emperor did that yeah yeah so they do that stuff and they they well you got to take care of her i'm gonna kenobi's like i'm gonna track down these leads and find out who's trying to kill her because Right. Yeah. Well, no, they tried to figure out where the where the thing came from, and it was uh, that's when he got sent to Camino. Yeah, because he went to that greasy spoon. That was like a diner. Right. Like, I was like, you just totally put a diner in this, and I'm like, yeah, that that was a good touch. Yeah. And I'm like, and I've never seen somebody try and sell drugs in a Star Wars movie. He's like, hey, you want to buy some death sticks? And yeah, I'm like, right. Oh. So like, you don't want to sell me death Also. <laughs> And in that same scene, George Lucas's daughter's in it. Really? Yeah. Who is she? She, I think she's a Twi'lek that's like standing right in the background, right there. Oh no shit! Yeah. Hey, good right for her, guys. He's like, you want to, you want to buy some death sticks? You don't want to sell me death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. <laughs> I want to go home and rethink my life. I mean, I still know parts of the movie I can recite. Yes, but, the, but that, that was I've seen a, it enough. That was a enjoyable part of the movie, though. That that reminded me of Star Wars. Um, the diner. No, the diner was just a good add-on. I mean, I thought it was good. They had a fucking cantina. It was it was the first time in Star Wars they didn't put a bar in something. It, it, they put a bar in it like before that, but I'm like, oh, people eat other places besides a bar or at home. Oh, I usually like to eat at a bar. No, I like eating at bars too. I'm just saying there are places besides a bar. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at least they weren't like walking up to a thing and saying what they wanted and then it like you know, 3D printed it. Yeah, exactly. Like Star Trek. Yes. Yeah, so like, well, how did that happen? Well, it rearranges molecules. So, well, thanks for figuring. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I well, why know. don't you do that to make more weapons? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah. I guess. So anyway, <laughs> we're not throwing shade to Star Trek. Well, maybe a little bit, but it's okay. I like Star Trek too. Yes. Just not as much. No, not, not even close as much. So anyway, there, you, their storylines diverge. Um, Hayden Christensen comes on rather rapey to uh, to Padme, but she falls for it. Um, and <laughs> and Obi Wan like goes to Camino and discovers this fucking army that somebody ordered. He didn't want. He's like, oh, a master cipher is. Well, he disappeared a long time ago. Right. You wouldn't look into that. <laughs> like he, somebody commissioned a giant fucking army. <laughs> well, I mean, he did like communicate back for like three seconds. <laughs> yeah, he, and I did like the fight between him and Django. Yeah, no, that was good. It and was, I'm like, it was good. This one isn't as bad, but I can still point out parts that I did not like. Right. You talking about the arena? Huh? Are you talking about the arena fight? Well, I mean, I mean, that's where we're going next. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, we we got to mention about how much. Anakin Skywalker doesn't like sand. Oh. <laughs> oh, and all 
also his mom. Also, you have to go back and you have to, you know, you have to see probably one of the better moments in the movie because oh it, yeah, you know, it was it showed like you know how crybaby ish he really was. It also showed. How I mean, it, I know his mom died. Okay, I get it, but he like killed all those sand people. <laughs> I mean, like he went ape shit. Yes, and it showed you just how unbalanced he is. I mean, he, obviously he's unbalanced, and he, you kind of think about it like, well, yeah, I did watch Phantom, and they're like, well, you know, there's something we just don't know about you. We're not, we can't put our finger on it. That's when you start putting your fucking finger on it. Yeah, <laughs> that's where it comes from. Yep. So they both, they, so they're they they were in Tatooine, and they somehow got the the message that cut out, and yeah, okay. So what happened after this was that. Uh, Obi Wan tailed Django. Yes. To Geonosis. Django Fett, not Django Unchained. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> kinda. All right. <laughs> kinda. <laughs> All right. And so, and then when they're, you know, then when you know they're still on Tantooine and everything else, then they get the message, and then they go to Geonosis. Right, because both of them are gonna. Keep... Did he say that there's a, like a large? collection of people here or something like that what's that and he's i don't know remember the exact message that he said oh yeah but he's like i'm gonna go help him and she's like i'm gonna tag along yeah no 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 he's like i'm supposed to protect you because he was gonna leave him he's like i was told to stay here she's like well i'm gonna go help him right Fuck right you. And then, <laughs> yeah and then he had and then he had to go yes and then enter in count Dooku. christopher lee Awesome actor. Yes, very good actor. And he did a good job as Count Dooku. Like, he, he did a good, like, hey, I'm a pompous dick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Count Dooku. Yes. I liked him a lot. And I really wish they would have called him more by his Sith name. I like Lord Tyrannus. I thought that was a cool name. Right. Um, as long as his last name's not Rex. and like Dooku Rex. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I believe that his name, his Jedi name was Dooku, Dooku right? Yeah. Because he was a Jedi, and then he, like, left. He left. He, yeah. No, he left in his own accord. He's like, I don't want to do this no more. Right. Because he was rich, too. Oh, right. Yeah, that's what I remember, was, like, reading, like, in yeah. some of the... the so he, he became a count. He became a count. Right. So he was always, like, a one. A, a two. two. Uh, three uh, Jedi. Uh, 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 no, four. <laughs> they, you know, no, they killed that one. We're back down to three. Um, so... They're there, and everybody gets captured. Obi Wan gets captured. Um, Padme gets captured. Anakin right. gets captured, and they put him in an arena. That's right. Yes, and not before Dooku tried to pull some shit, uh, skull duggery, and try join me, and we'll destroy the Sith. And I'm like, dude, uh, what are you trying to do? That this made no sense with the rest of the fucking movies. Well, no, it always happens that the that the apprentice tries, always, to, kill tries the to kill the master. Right. So, you know, I mean, it was, but it was a little forced. It was. <laughs> it was forced. Ah, <laughs> forced virus. Um, so anyway. Ooh, arena- man, way too many metachlorians. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, no, it, well, I mean, partly because of the fact, though, I think that Palpatine might have, you know, divulged a little bit of stuff about Anakin. Right. So. So, anywho. They are in the arena, and this is the perfect example that Star Wars always does to show exotic creatures that are trying to kill people in an arena or some type of pit. So I, I think it's good. That was good. Yeah. Wasn't bad. And at the moment when they overcome the odds, they're just going to shoot them. That's right. And then a bunch of fucking Jedi show up. And this is where it got really good for me. <laughs> All these Jedi show up, and shit hits the fan. That's right. And it's a badass fight. I see Mace Windu's purple lightsaber. I'm like, yes, there are other color lightsabers. Cuts off Django Fett's head. Yep. And head's still in the helmet. And Bo- Boba picks it up. <laughs> with Boba watching. Yes, with Boba watching. Yep. And, you know, and then and then and then like they're outnumbered and then they get a second surprise save by that fucking army that got made out of nowhere. That's right. Well, I mean, because if they built you an army, you right. might as well use it. Exactly. And it, and it had a really badass open warfare scene. I yep. thought it was just awesome. Yep. And then you see how cool Count Dooku is, but the fight's not as good as the one from Phantom Menace. No. Um, it's good. Yes. It's not the Duel of Fates. No, it's not the Duel of Fates. 
And it just shows you, at that moment, Dooku ha always has Obi-Wan's fucking number in any type of lightsaber fight. Dooku just does. Like, Obi-Wan doesn't got shit on Dooku. Dooku fucking fucks him up every time. And he fucked up both him and Anakin. And Anakin, who has his arms cut, gets one of his arms cut off. That's right. I'm like, dude, I mean, like, if... You're always losing limbs in these series. <laughs> so this shit happens and Yoda shows up. And yep. everybody's like, we're going to see a Yoda lightsaber fight. There's little lightsabers coming out. It's, it's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I did like the fact he was flipping all over the fucking place. Uh, what, what else was he going to do? Well, I don't know. I always just thought he was I mean, just he so... wasn't going to just stand straight up, stand there, and like try to go you know, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I know, but he was like crazy powerful with the Force. Yeah. And I, I thought he was going to move fast, but I don't see him like go, like bouncing all over. Yeah, he does. It's like, like he was a piece of flubber. Um, so I thought it was pretty cool. It was, it was, I wasn't saying it was awful. I'm just saying I didn't expect that it. was another clapping in the theater moment. Oh yeah. yeah. And then, and then Yoda fucks him up and Dooku does like, I'm going to drop something on him and I'm going to get away. And oh, he gets right. Away. Right. So he gets away. He runs away. Yeah. And his, in his solar sail ship and his solar sail, which made no sense. <laughs> so anyway, he goes back and tells Sidious. And he's like, exactly as I planned, man. Because I left this part out when we were reviewing this part of the, the, this movie. Palpatine had politics done, and he got emergency powers That's for this right. army. And who do you think gave him his emergency powers? Yep, the one, the only, Jar Jar, Jar, Jar Binks. Binks. Fuck that guy. <laughs> he's so bad. He's so bad. Okay, so... We're gonna skip over all the Clone Wars, even though it's a great cartoon. Yeah, just I, I don't have I don't have much to say bad about yeah. the Clone Wars cartoon. We're gonna go right into Revenge of the Sith, which yeah. is the best movie out of the prequel trilogy. And this movie was a downer, but you expected it to be a downer. Okay, if you knew Star Wars, you knew that. Yeah, but you knew what was coming. Well, no, that's funny. I was at the fucking theater watching it, and. You know, I'll get back to this. Let's, let's go through the movie. I'll talk about this right, in a minute. Right. So anyway, it opens up with the deciding battle of the Clone Wars where they tried to kidnap Palpatine. No, they did kidnap him. They kidnap him. They but, kidnapped Palpatine. But they thought that it was going to be like, it, it's a republic. So if they would have kidnapped him, the Senate would have stood and been like, okay, I didn't understand. But it was, all, it was all going according to design. Yeah, I know. I get it. Totally to the plan. But it it didn't make sense when it comes to a fucking republic. Like, if he would have got away, it just would have been, they got him. We still have him. And then that would have been the other guy. And then it would have been the just other guy. Just not Chancellor Valorum. Valor. Valorum's still crying. <laughs> Hanging out with Nod and Ursa. Right. Um, so anyway, cool fight scene happens. They... Yes. Uh, Obi Wan and Anakin happen to be the ones that got to go in there and rescue him. Oh, it's so weird. They're the only two fucking Jedi, uh, so they go in there and they go to rescue him and they fight Dooku and Obi Wan gets knocked out. Go figure. Yeah. Dooku's got his number. Right. Anakin shows how much more badass he is. That's right. And he, and he cuts off both his fucking arms right. and he actually listens to Palpatine for the first time. He's like, he's like, you do it. Yeah. <laughs> it you got to kill. You have to kill him. It was like, holy shit. He. He, he, just, he straight up fucking murdered him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was beaten. <laughs> like he couldn't shoot. He can't shoot lightning out of nubs. And he's just saying it was, he had this like oh shit face. And then when he says do it, and he knows hey that's my boss saying for him to kill me. Right. He's like fuck man really right. I'm fired. Yeah. <laughs> there goes Christopher Lee. There, there goes Christopher Lee because surprise surprise Palpatine orchestrated everything because he's Darth Sidious. Yes. And he's controlling the Trade Federation. Hey, you're supposed to say spoiler alert. I'm not before saying that. This stuff, it's been years. Um, so, anyway, yeah, we got to we got we're gonna stomp out these separatists. Um, most of the movie is Palpatine uh, trying oh, to seduce him. Man, you know what? We forgot the like the most horrible scene of Attack of the Clones. What? When they get married? Oh yeah, they got married in secret at the very end. Yeah. I can't believe we forgot to say that. Yeah. I was thinking about it, and then we just went into this one. I think I put it out of my mind because it was so bad. Yeah. You know, you like bad. you don't remember, like, when you get hurt really bad, like, what it felt like. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah. So, they're married this whole time, which you're not supposed to do when you're a Jedi. Yep. Um, except for if you're Yoda or Yaddle, because they're allowed to smash. <laughs> so, right. so, anyway. Sandwich. So, they go. Most of this movie is... 
I don't know. It, it's it's Palpatine trying to recruit Anakin as his new apprentice. And guess what? Spoiler alert. I did say it this time. It works. Yep. Because Anakin's having these dreams of his his wife being in pain. Oh, yeah. And also, she for, you forgot to say that when he arrives back on Coruscant, you, the, to the hero's welcome, they, they break away for a kiss. And, and she's pregnant. She's pregnant. That but, happened somewhere in the Clone Wars. A, yes, but I didn't see that episode of Clone Wars. No. Them smashing. No, they actually said that they refused to film it. Really? They're going to do it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be going around. Um, so anyway, <laughs> so and while this is going on, Obi Wan Kenobi's actually doing his job, unlike anybody else, and he's going to go hunt down General Grievous, which I thought was a cool addition to this fucking movie. Yeah, I kind of like General Grievous. General Grievous, he's the leader of the droid army. They really, they really, they really developed Dooku and Grievous. In Clone Wars. In Clone Wars. Yeah. Along with Asajj Ventress and yeah. everything else. Absolutely. Made cool characters. Cool characters. They go after him, and he, he kills Grievous after a prequel fight, even though I played Episode 3 for PlayStation, and the fight in that game was 10 times better than the fucking movie. It was really good. <laughs> you, was oh, you mean the, the side-scroller? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was a good Awesome. Game. Yeah. So for it, Xbox. It was for Xbox and PlayStation. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't do PlayStation. <laughs> it's okay. Nobody's perfect. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, Obi-Wan comes back, and he has an inkling that, hey, they're hooking up. <laughs> I think the part where she told him, I think, yeah, I'm she, pregnant. <laughs> they had a kid's child kind of gave it away. Right. So um, they eventually find out that Palpatine's behind everything. That's right. And they go to uh, to arrest him, and we finally get to see the Emperor in action. Mm-hmm. And like he whoops some ass. He whoops some ass. Like, I, like I, I watched some of the uh, stuff, like the 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 legend stuff, and they're talking about Kit Fisto being one of the best swordsmen in the order, and like he just jumps up and fucking stabs him, and I'm like, damn. Yep. And then uh, I think her name is uh, Lumdali, or uh, yeah, she's badass too, and yeah. he, he killed yeah, her. I can't remember how to say her name. So but yeah, he jumps up, kills her, and then there's one more that they kill. But then, then bad motherfucker himself. That's right, Sam L. Sam L. Mace Windu duels with them. Okay, now this is the part I was talking about a few minutes ago. This is for a movie that this is a movie that people have watched Star Wars. Okay, and they're watching this. Mace Windu's got him beat, and he knows I can't leave him alive. This motherfucker's connected. That's right. And Anakin's like, no, he has to stand trail. I'm like, and you're still a whiny bitch. Yeah. And Mace goes to kill him. And Anakin cuts his fucking arm off. Right. I knew it was coming. I hear all these gasps behind me. They're like, oh, I can't believe you did that. I heard that behind me. I'm like, I'm like I want to turn. I'm like, fucking really? Did, did you not watch any of the other movies that came out like <laughs> 20 Five years ago, right. and he's so he shoots him out there, and he becomes Darth Vader, and he's you know, you know, I got a I got a kid on the way, but let's go kill some younglings. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean at that at that point, that's when he did that, and then he even I, said, "What have I done?" Like that, right? And then and then you know, Order sixty six. Yeah, Order sixty six. They wipe out almost all the Jedi's except for Yoda, who's helping out a bunch of Wookies. And they, you know, let's throw Chewbacca in here because, you know, reasons. Um, you know, everybody was like, yeah, it's Chewbacca. You know, like, yeah, you can really tell them all apart. I did, well, it was Yeah, it's Sash. It was him. Yeah, I know. He actually referred to him. They right. Chewbacca. Right. And, um, you know, you figure when he said, I'm going to go see Yoda, you figure Chewbacca would be like, oh, tell him I said hi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You did. Well, I mean, it wouldn't have sounded like that. No. <laughs> so... <laughs> And then the second best lightsaber fight in the series, oh, I'd say third, um, because, you know, they find out Anakin went in there and helped raise the temple, kill a bunch of kids. That's right. And um, then, he, then he went to Mustafar to take out, you know, he's he's cleaning everything up for fucking Palpatine That's right. to get rid of all those, you know, uh, Trade Federation leaders. And uh, you know Obi Wan's like Obi Wan and Leota get together like yeah he's well like, that's after he kills Grievous yeah he kills on, Grievous on Yupata yeah Yupata yes he almost gets killed by his own troops that's right 
and he realized what's going on. He tries to get a hold of somebody. The only person can get a hold of is Yoda. Uh, well, he got a hold of that in Bail Organa. Yeah, Bail. By, played by Jimmy, Jimmy Smith. Smith. Jimmy Smith himself. Jimmy Smith. You know, he always looks like a used car salesman to me. Yeah, he's a good actor. Yeah, I know. So anyway. That's why he still works. <laughs> well, I know, because, you know, they keep doing, like, Rebels and Clone Wars. <laughs> so, it's all right. You know, at least until Alderaan blows up. But so anyway. Um, uh, they just ended his career. Yeah. <laughs> no. And so Obi-Wan and Yoda get this idea, and they're going to go, and they got they go, got to take the Sith out, because, you know, they're enemies. That's right. Yoda's going to take on the Emperor because Yoda... Well, no, the... Yoda takes on the Emperor before he gets rescued by Bail Organa. Well, I know, but I'm, but I'm talking about when they're planning. Yo, oh, Emperor. right, right, right. Because Obi-Wan was like, I don't want to fight Anakin. I basically raised him. Right. And and like Yoda's like, well, look, you're not going to beat the Emperor. <laughs> so he goes, this is how it's going to go. You're going to have to do that. And it ended really with the... A, pair of really good lightsaber fights yeah and it showed how powerful yoda is and like I'm, I'm sorry i still think the emperor ran away from him mm. it blew up and then the emperor held on but he's like he got those troops in there as soon as he could yeah you're right um and you know before obi-wan and anakin fought he decided to choke his baby mama which 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 made, broke her heart. It broke her heart. It broke her heart. Yelp. Yelp. And apparently Anakin didn't understand the concept of high ground. So <laughs> he got fucked up. And it was probably one of the best speeches out of the entire prequel trilogy it was Obi Wan just that's some good fucking acting, yeah. man. He you he hit it hard with that. And it makes me excited to watch Kenobi when it's gonna come out. Right. So like that, uh, like he, he instead of pushing him to die in the lava, he decides to let him just burn on the side of a, of a fucking. Yeah, he just wanted lava. to like really just let it sink in. Yeah, I'm like you know you, you know I, I raised you, but there's no you don't believe in mercy killing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so you just yeah I know yeah he, he wanted <laughs> he wanted him to think about it yeah think about what you did right yeah so oh but he doesn't die that's right we see the transformation of Vader into. Um, into Darth Vader, into Darth Vader, Anakin. Anakin into well, Darth Vader. no, yeah, Darth. Well, he was Darth Vader at that point already, but he, but in, then he as took that Darth Vader. Yes, yes, and uh, yeah, and so, and you know, and then the, the twins are born. Yep. The twins are born in secret. Padme dies no. from a broken heart. That's right. And they decide it's to... It's like she lost the will to live. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then they are like, oh, we gotta split these kids up. That's right. All right, Leia. You can go stay in this royal palace with this Luke. You're gonna go stay with your aunt and uncle and be a dirt farmer. Well, you know, uh, uh, was he a, a moisture farmer? Yeah, when, it still looks like dirt to me. <laughs> moisture, <laughs> Mo moisture. <laughs> um, but you know, hey, let's hide his son on Tatooine with his only living pair of relatives. Now, given a lot of people saying like he'd never go back there, he doesn't care. He's a new person. But I'm like, yeah, yeah. I mean, that what this relocation well, program's not going to stick I you mean, with your uncle and aunt. I mean, that's the thing though. They hid it, so at that point, he didn't know they were there. Yeah, it makes sense. So it's a big galaxy, right? But not so big that. C-3PO can't be made by Anakin and Chewbacca happened to know Yoda. And yeah. Mm. Just saying. So it's a little convenient in parts and other parts not. But. Yeah. And that You have to suspend your disbelief. Right. And I now, mean, for the whole thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's why it's called fantasy. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but anyway, guys, that was our quick analysis. <laughs> I would say quick. Two dudes talking about the sucky <laughs> Star Wars prequels. The prequels. <laughs> And we hope you liked what you heard. If you did like what you heard and you want to hear more, join the battery pack. Smash the like button. Subscribe. Follow, subscribe. And never miss another episode. All right. All right, guys. Well, we will be seeing you sooner than later. And you guys all have a great night. Stay off the pipe. Don't forget to wipe. <laughs>